just okay, is uh, are there any more questions? Okay, so I'm just going to talk about the different methods. There are at least I, I will try to just list four of them, and uh, we will we will see that how much do you know? And so, so I, I want to just give not detail that who they are working, but only just one one slide about each of the methods, uh, because I want to spend a little bit more time on. Uh, on visualization, and hopefully I will have another break. Yes, okay, I will have another break, and so that uh, I will just bring the bring this three-dimensional printout of the result, whatever we have had. Hi, does it working? Uh, right. Okay, anyway, if I'm just finishing sooner, everyone will be happy. Isn't it true? Okay. Okay, uh, any more questions? Okay, I guess this is, this should be just quite clear. So this is a topological proof. And okay, I, I have to just mention some sub subtleties. Uh, for the proof so that it really uses that we are just looking for the full dimensional entropy expressions. So uh, the whole proof doesn't work at the moment if we are just discarding the private information. So the problem with this proof is that this cone has to be full dimensional. Okay, otherwise we cannot apply that. Okay, if it's not full dimensional, this, then, then we would find an entropic point inside the cone itself. So if you discard the private information and we are looking only for those, those uh, uh, distributions when the private information is zero, then suddenly we might have the situation that okay, this is a very flat thing and, and it might, might be the case that we do not have any uh, entropic point inside that, that, that very uh, lower dimensional plate. So therefore, if you want to prove the same result, for the case whenever there is no private information, then you have to work hard and find out the different things. And actually, this this also true so that this thing is also true if you are just throwing away the private information. But this requires a different kind of reasoning, so it doesn't work. And that. Yeah, okay. Okay. So. Okay, so that uh, new inequalities, and so I will just try to just list some of the methods that who they are working and then examples, but uh, we will see later on that which are just, so I would like to just go something about the maximum entropy method and the polymetroid or convolution for those things. So that, okay, so there are at least, uh, as far, at least what I know, there are these four different techniques for uh, getting new entropy uh, inequalities, at least just looking for something that all the entropy, uh, this, uh, en entropy region looks like. Uh, they are using different properties of the entropy cones, and they are entrop uh, the entropies, uh, but uh, all of them seems to be uh, weak. So the idea are not, and, and all of them is quite cumbersome and computational intensive. Uh, stuff. Uh, what would be interesting to know is so that the number three and number four, uh, they are stronger. This is quite easy to see, the stronger than the first and the second one. But uh, they seem to be stronger because uh, at least number four is something like a global uh, structure, we, while the one and two, they are, they are working locally. So therefore, it should be, uh, it should, it should be able to give more. Uh, and also the number three is something which is an algebraic method which has very little to do with the geometry of the world situation. And so therefore it should also be able to just generate something more, but, but things are simple, just we are stuck and we do not know. So that would be very nice to see that whether really they are more uh, powerful than the first two. Okay, so the first, uh, first method, okay, I, I just simply just stole uh, these ideas. Uh, Oh, okay, that this is not necessarily describing exactly that how you understand uh, the best way the method itself, but uh, more or less that's the thing. So that if we have an information inequality of this form, whenever this doesn't contain y, this doesn't contain x, and this is something which is on 
which says that x and y, they are conditionally, z and x are the conditionally independent, then you can simply just throw it. Oh, this is, yep, okay, yeah, that's okay. Then you can simply just throw it away, and whatever you are getting, you are getting. Yeah, this is also information inequality, and simply this is the uh, independent copies method, so that you can just make an independent copy of y, and that's what you are just applying. So that's, that's, the, that's the original method. So if you can just find those things, then, then you are getting. And here is an example. Here is a fantastic uh, channel inequality. OK, there's one, two, three, four, five variables. And you can, you can simply just type it in, and it will just count that. True. OK, it has been proved. OK, and then. Uh, what actually happens then, this is the extra information, whatever is here. So therefore, this method simply says that you can just get rid of this, this part, and whatever you are getting, it will be a new entropy inequality. OK, so that's, this is a new entropy inequality. OK, next thing, uh, which we're just coming a little bit later, this is the uh, two Macquarie chaps. And OK, he was here loud the previous week, I guess and gave a, gave a talk on the uh, channel inequalities for the uh, Kolmogorov complexity. OK, so that it is something very similar to what thing, which says that if we have this entropy inequality, we can strengthen it by adding a certain term, which is, which is simply just the sum of the coefficients. So that this says that, OK, we can just make a balanced inequality, so that, that some way you can, you can just make the wall inequality stronger. And here is the uh, example, so that this is, this is almost the same thing what we have seen before, so this is a channel inequality, and in this case, we can simply just subtract this stuff, which is, which is this thing, because the uh, sum of the coefficients of z is simply just 3, so 2 plus 2 minus 1. So that is why I'm just getting this minus 3 here. So this lambda is this minus 3. So that is the Makarichev technique. Uh, what has been proved that the first and the second method are equivalent if you are just looking only for the balanced inequalities. OK, that's. OK, let's, well, let's skip it. So I'm just going to give you the two others. And, and as they will be just used, yes, there is, there, there is a kind of good geometrical interpretation of all of those things. But whatever is coming is a little bit algebraic method and also something which, which, is, uh, which, is, uh, which seems to be, okay, at least which is stronger than, than any of those two. So that rather I would just stuck with them. So here is the, yep, go back. Yep. Uh, not so. You can, well, we will see uh, certain entropy inequalities which are not linear. Okay, so that is it should be linear stuff. So that it is for linear stuff only. But but at least for the Matus method, uh, it, it works, and then uh, the maximum entropy method it works also non uh, linear uh, combinations as well. Okay, so this is the Matus method. We have fantastic way if we have a polymetroid G, then and we have a number T, then also we have two other polymetroids. One is simply just going, uh, going by down T and going up by T, and so that this new polymetroid is simply just defined this way. Okay, so that the uh, this po new polymetroid is simply just the minimum of these two values. The, this, this polymetroid is simply just the maximum of these two values for every, every j. Uh, what actually happens is that the first thing is will not be a polymetroid if this minimum happens to be a negative value at certain places. So that the first thing, it should be that this value it should also be non-negative. So that t cannot be too large in uh, whenever we are just applying this thing. The too large, it simply means it should be uh, t should be not bigger than g of a. Okay, otherwise, otherwise certain things would just go to negative, but otherwise not. So what Modish proves that whenever I have this g, which is an almost entropic 
then these two, whatever you see here, this one and this one, they are also almost entropic. Wow. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that is the that is the Maltus proof. And and what what it implies that if we have any entropy inequality, which holds for any kind of uh, Okay, for any, any ent almost entropic polymetroids, okay, that should be should, should be something which is a continuous stuff. So that okay, so this is. Then you can simply just uh, plug here inside of G, uh, either the first one or the second one, because if G was originally um, almost entropic, then these are almost entropic. These are almost entropic. So therefore, the same inequality should hold also for this thing and also for this thing. Yep. Okay, so that's that, that's uh, that's that is such easy stuff. So that whenever I have any inequality which holds for a polymetroid, then it must also for must also hold for this thing and also must hold for that stuff. Okay, because okay, because it holds for any any uh, entropic polymer almost entropic polymetroid, then uh, therefore it holds for also those things. Yep, that's the method. Okay, simply just you have you start something which is a uh, uh, which, which holds for things, and you are just plugging in one of these two things, and you are just getting an order inequality. And here is an example. Once again, I'm just starting with this channel inequality. Fine. And then, okay, so that I'm just using this, uh, this thing, so that I'm just uh, using this stuff with G, Z, T, or I'm just going down by T, one T is uh, smaller the value than that stuff. Then simply I'm just computing all the entropies one by one, and it turns out that every entropy remains the same thing except for uh, those terms which are just containing z, and those terms simply just de uh, uh, decreases by the amount of whatever in uh, whatever I have in t. So therefore, this will decrease by t, this will decrease by 2t, and this will decrease by 2t as well. So therefore, this is also an entropic inequality. Yep, and if you are just simply just plugging in with t equal to that stuff, then you are getting the previous one. Okay. So the uh, the only problem is that uh, here you have to just compute. So if you are just choosing t for a certain value, then you have to compute all the entropies that whether they remain the same, they will decrease, and if they decrease, that how much? And there could be a lot of cases that if this happens, this happens, then then uh, then different values are coming up. But in a, if you are just choosing this t and the variable just smartly, then then all the computations are quite easy, and then you are just getting fantastic new results. So that this is this is simple, just whatever we have seen before. So the same. Uh, okay, the, the same thing, whatever you see here, this number three, it is subtracted here exactly. Okay, you see, so that, uh, I just get the minus t, minus four, so that this is minus three, and this t is exactly the same entropy expression. So therefore, this is whatever you see here is simply just a, a little bit more general stuff than what we have seen before. For Matus method, all of the previous things are just uh, falling out uh, almost. Uh, without any trouble. So that's okay. So that once again, if you have an entropy inequality, whatever, then you can just plug in other almost entropy polymetroids in the same inequality, and that must also hold. Okay. The trouble trouble is that okay here this is not so simple stuff. So that sometimes you have to just make ugly calculations. That exactly what happens. We have to know how to choose the t and the variable, whatever you are using. Maybe you can just use several variables, but that's that is the essence of the of the method. Why do you call it convolution? Pardon me? Why do you call it convolution? Because this is in the polymetroid, this is called convolution. Okay, this is a special case of a more general construction, which is a convolution. So um, Ferro it like likes, likes it, uh, it it written in the convolution style. I like it writing this way. Which is much uglier than, than not so simple and not so well uh, known in the uh, polymetroid circle. So the polymetroid circle is this technique is, is simply just the convolution method. Okay, so that, that's that's the definition of how to convolve two polymetroids, and which is which is a polymetroid. And this is this is exactly what is the basic definition of the convolution. Okay, not, uh, not exactly, so that some, some extra stuff is done here. Only one of them is a convolution, the other is it involves some uh, extra tricks. But okay, so that is the that is the convolution method. Okay, uh, it, anyway, it has a very nice name. Yes, okay, so you, uh, whether, whether it has something to do with the voice stuff, but 
Okay. And okay, it comes with the maximum entropy method, which should be quite clear and quite intuitive here. And it simply says that if we are we have any distribution of a couple of variables, and if you have a, this kind of inequality, whatever you see here. Okay, so that it involves uh, the marginals of certain subsets of all the, all the, all the, all the variables. Okay, so that if this inequality, it holds for each possible entropic point, or almost entropic point, then we can, we can, we have a distribution. Okay, any kind of distribution. And in this distribution, we are fixing all the we are fixing all the marginals which are just here in this expression. Okay, only those things, whatever you see here. And we simply just let, we are just, okay, so that we are looking for all possible distributions when, uh, in which the marginals are exactly the things, the marginals, what were required here. Okay, so we are fixing the marginals of certain, uh, we are fixing only certain marginals and we, are, we are, do not mind that whatever the other marginals would be. And among those distributions, we are just looking at the one which has the maximal entropy. So that is usually a quite a useful thing whenever you are looking for the maximal entropy distribution if you have restrictions on certain marginals. Yep. Yep, okay. So that we, are, we only have an inequality which, which we want to hold for certain uh, marginals only, and we are just looking for all distributions which have these marginals. And among these distributions, we are just checking, looking those which have the maximum entropy. There is always one which has a maximum entropy, and this is a unique distribution. Yep, okay. So you are fixing marginals, and there is a unique distribution with this fixed marginals, it has a maximal entropy. The whole, whole thing has a maximal entropy. Okay, but if you are looking for those things which have a maximal entropy, then uh, this maximal entropy also has a lot of fantastic consequences because, uh, because if you are just splitting uh, this distribution into two parts, three parts, okay, and no marginal, each marginal is either here or here, or simply just, okay, that no marginal uh, crosses uh, these two parts, and no margin, uh, that's no marginal contains these things. Then if you have a maximal uh, entropy distribution, then these two parts should be independent over the middle one. Okay, in a maximal entropy distribution, if you have no restriction about, all the restrictions, whatever I have, they are just going here, here, and no restriction, which is just means both of those parts, then this thing and this thing should be independent over that thing. Were it not independent, you can simply increase the uh, total entropy without affecting all the marginals, whatever you see here. Okay, so the maximal distribution, you have lots of, lots of conditional independence. Yep. Okay, so that what actually can can have, so that if this inequality, whatever you see here, it holds for any kind of a distribution, that what I do, I simply just have a distribution and I'm just fixing here the marginals which are just here, and I'm just looking for that thing which has the maximal entropy, and in this case, every, every conditional entropy, whatever is enlisted here, they will be zero. Yep, okay, so therefore if I have any distribution with this, with this marginals which are here, then I have another distribution which has exactly the same marginals here, whatever is here, but everything here will be zero. Consequently, this thing, whatever you see here, it must also hold. Because I will have, <laughs> yep, okay, so therefore this inequality must also hold for any distribution as well. Yeah. No, of course not. Okay. Okay. So that 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 uh, I well, okay. That's may, maybe I would just tell you something more about that stuff. So that here is an inequality about six variables. Okay. So that this is this is a six variable inequality. One should once again check by any of those softwares. Okay. And this is the red one. This is the extra one. So that if you are just looking for all the terms, okay, then you see that. 
uh, there is no term which would contain x, y, and z, t at the same time. Okay, so therefore, if I'm just looking for the maximal entropy extension of the six variables, whenever I'm just fixing all the marginals which are just mentioned here, okay, all the marginals which are mentioned here, then in this maximal entropy extension, the x, y, and z, t, they will be independent over u, u, v. So therefore, this, without this extra term, this inequality must also hold. Yep, okay. So that this is a brand new inequality. Yep? So yes? If, you know, if, even though you say it is maximal entropy, I mean, what you're doing is you are really taking copies with consistent marginals, but you are imposing additional conditional independent structure. So how is it fundamentally different from the first two methods? Okay, so that once again, so this is a global method. Okay, the, the, fir the first, the two others, they were just local. You, you are doing something and you are just changing things so that uh, if you're just making copy variables and you're just extending them, then, then you are just making some local changes. Here, what is that you can think that you are fixing so that you have lots of lots of, uh, uh, you have lots of lots of variables and okay, uh, okay, just let's you see, let's look for four variable inequalities. Then I have A, B, A, B, C, D, E, A, A, B, B, C. So I have lots of C's, lots of A's, lots of D's, and I have certain marginals, okay, that's A, B, C, D, and there are certain triplets which have to be same distribution as A, B, C, certain quadruples which have to be same distribution of A, B, C, D, certain singletons, okay, that's each A should have the same distribution of A, Okay, so everything. Okay, so that's what I'm just coming up with. So this is a hypergraph uh, which says that, okay, that which one, two, three, four parts should have the same marginal as my original A, B, C, D. Okay, so I'm just going to make uh, inequalities which are just a consequence of those things. Then what I can do, I can assume that this whole thing Fixing those marginals which are here, for the rest, I can assume that they are, they are that, that this has, among all of those possible distributions which with these marginals, this has the maximal entropy. And it has the maximal entropy, and I can simply just cut the whole thing into three parts so that there is no marginal which would contain points from here to here, then this part, this part and that part should be conditional, independent, assuming the middle part. So this is an extra uh, Shannon inequality, which you can also just put for free. This comes here for free. So that everything, whatever is true here for the Shannon inequalities, plus everything, whatever comes from this maximal entropy assumption, you can simply just throw in and whatever consequences you are just getting, it will, uh, for the original marginals, it must be true for every possible distribution. So I didn't get that part. Why, why is it true? I mean, okay, you assume maximum entropy and you've got a new inequality. Okay, well, I am just. I am, I, am, I am just writing down inequality which contains the uh, entropies, only those marginal distributions, whatever I just encircled here. Don't only, I'm interested only in those, uh, those inequalities. Okay? Then, Deriving those things, I can assume that all, all the Shannon, entropy, Shannon inequalities will hold for all the subset, whatever I have here. Plus, I can assume that all of those independence can also hold because, because I'm just looking for the maximal entropy distribution here. So that these two things, it will also be independent from that one. So I have a lot of extra uh, conditions, which I can assume that whatever those things will find out. And now I'm just looking for only consequences for those subset which I have encircled here only. So that if well, consequences which I just contain other subset, I, I, these are not interesting. Yeah. So I mean, it's clear that this method obviously implies the first two methods. Right. But by Okay, so that's that would be an interesting thing whether it stays so that 
okay, that looking lots of ugly pictures which have like circles. Okay, here this is not clear that how you can just apply the previous previous methods. They are simply just making bigger and bigger so that uh, you are making a tree, kind of a tree which is not not loops, but this method allows loops in 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 those things, and it is not clear that how you can just mimic mimic that loops with with other other methods. So, so yes. this tree then, I mean, yeah, that's if tree then, then yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Absolutely. So if it's no loops then 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 the whole thing can be mimicked by, by any of the any of the previous methods, right? However, if there are there are some some things then it seems to be a stronger, but even even okay, while it is almost the same thing as the first two methods, it is has no clear connection with the Matush uh, convolution method. Okay, that whole how does it uh, comes with it. Yep. That's simply just simply just computing. Okay, so after a while, uh, okay, so okay, so that if you are you have to just compute something, then then you are just throwing lots of things. And okay, I, okay, so what I actually I just copied here so that you see here this uh, fantastic inequality here. Okay, this is a six variable inequality. Okay, the question is that. Okay, the Zhang Yang inequality, it comes from the following picture. Okay, so that maybe I'm just not making maybe I'm just not making things wrong way. So that uh, this is the picture. So okay, I have A, B, C, D, and A prime, B prime, C, D. And the thing is that, okay, this A, B, C, D is fixed. This is also fixed. And also I know that A, B, uh, so that the, 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 this four has the same distribution as this four. And otherwise, A and A prime, B and B prime, they have the same, same distributions. Okay, and in this case, so that's that's the picture what I'm just starting from. And if I'm just looking for the maximum entropy extension of all possible distributions, for which it is true that these six stuff, whatever you see here, they are uh, they, they are satisfying the thing that the this four and this four has the same distribution as my A B C D. Then what actually happens that the maximum uh, entropy says that these two things is independent over that stuff. So that, yep, okay, that's A, B, and A prime, B prime, it is independent assuming C and D. Yep, okay, and now what I'm just looking for inequalities which contain only A, B, C, D, A, okay, that's D, and also I know that the, uh, all the marginals a, B, C, D, and all the marginals of A prime, B prime, C, D, they are the same thing. So the, this is six, this is seven, seven equality among the, this, among the entropies because, because they are the same thing. So that question, is there any consequences of all the channel inequalities for the six variables for this inequality plus the equality of the entropies, whatever here? Is there any extra assumption, extra extra consequences of those things? And what it turns out that this is what whatever consequence we have is exactly the Zhang Yang inequality. Okay, so that this is the Zhang Yang inequality, which comes up from making that okay in this six point. If we are just looking only for marginal of this four and the marginal of this four, then we may assume without. Okay, that uh, for extra stuff that these two and these two they are independent given these two, and okay, if we are writing out everything, then we are just getting extra inequalities, and one of them is the Zhang Yang. Actually, that's no more. That's that the Zhang Yang inequality which comes here. Yes. Okay. The next question. Okay, we we understand this thing that the question is that okay, what happens if we do this thing? Uh, we are asking for each, okay, this is C, D, A, B, and this is Z. 
OK, we are looking for each five variable inequalities. OH do not have any term which could contain Z A and Z B at the same time. OK, so that I'm just looking for five variable inequalities which do not contain uh, this cross terms, whatever is here. If um, OK, that's, I am listing all the entropies. And so therefore, I, that's in this case. If I'm just interested in only those things, then I can assume that this A, B, and this Z, they are conditionally independent over Z. So the question, what are the consequences of all the Shannon inequalities for this phi variable plus this thing? What are those consequences which do not contain any of these cross terms, which are just here? Okay? And any of those consequences, it will be a true five variable inequality, which always holds for any five uh, random variables. Yep, OK. Surprise, surprise, whatever you saw here, a lot of times that is one of them. OK, that those things which are just you see here, so that the Zhang Yang inequality is also just can be, can be just got from one of those things. So whatever you saw previously, it simply just follows from this thing. OK, you can just ask that what is the total amount of inequality. You, you tell me every inequality which follows this uh, from these five points here, all five variable inequalities. OK, and actually there are two of them, just apart from the, the trivial permutations of the things. And the next question is that, OK, so what, what I'm just try, trying to do is, OK. OK, so that if I have six variables and I, you know, I'm interested in, ter in, in uh, entropy expressions in which no cross term is from here, so that A, B, and R, S never are mixed together, so that they all, uh, A, B, and C, D, and R, S, and C, D, they are mixing, but those things are not mixing together. So I'm just looking only for those you know, entropy expressions, and those things are not uh, anywhere, then, of course, I can assume that A, B, and R, S, they are independent, assuming C, D. So the question, what are the six variable inequalities <laughs> which uh, do not contain any term which would be just crossed here? However, f and follow from that this thing is equal to zero and all the shell inequalities, what are those? Uh, those inequalities, they will be valid six variable inequalities. Okay, and all six variable inequalities are those things which are just can be got here. And okay, this is one of them. Okay, this is one of the basic six variable inequalities which can be just got this way. So I, and, and I, I just computed those things in the last week, and there are exactly 31 of those six variable inequalities which are just coming out this way and every every everything else which you, you can because got it just go follows from this 31 uh, including all the permutations and whatever so that okay the 31 those things which are just invariant for the permutation yep okay more or less that was what we were asking Pharaoh yeah Look at those things, one of which I got here, and I do not know that how to get. But of course, those things can be just got. If you know that what to prove and how to prove it, then so those things do not involve any any fancy manipulation of those independent stuff. So that definitely they can be done by using any of the other methods. And once once you know that exactly that what to what to go for, but if you are just searching for new inequalities which are which are coming from some some easy ideas, then very probably those things, those things might help. Yep. Any question? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Any question? May I go on? OK. That's it. Yep. Can I just finish? Yes. OK. Then I'm just getting to the interesting part, hopefully. OK. So first thing, private information, so that we know that stuff. So the private information, what is the what is difference between the total information and if you are just looking, you are throwing away only a single participant. And uh, 
And so that whatever you see here at the bottom is that the private information can be just discarded. Uh, this is actually the same uh, theorem as that every entropy inequality can be strengthened to be a, a balanced inequality. Okay, and the proof is, is quite easy, namely, if you are using a Matush method for the, uh, for the, uh, for the polymetroid, which simply just takes away this T, which is just the private information from, from the participant, then surprise, surprise, you are getting a different polymetroid in which exactly the private information is missing. So, uh, so that's it, so that whenever you have any entropic polymetroid, then automatically you can throw away the private information. You are getting an almost entropic. You are not, means you are not guaranteed to get an entropic, but you are guaranteed to get an almost entropic. And also you can just give up as much private information as you want, simply just independently giving each individual some extra, extra stuff without anything. So the private information, if you are, we are looking for the entropy, Region, it means that the dimension when the private information goes, it is simply just the full dimensional half plane or whatever. So this is a direct product of the R plus with the rest of the whole thing. Okay, so that it is more or less some interesting stuff. So that whatever the value is, it simply doesn't have any effect on, on the other coordinates. Yes, does it make sense what I'm saying? Okay, I'm just starting something brand new stuff. Okay. Uh, okay, this, well, going back to the three-dimensional stuff once again, so that here, well, here, here I, I just put all the new coordinates. These are the private information. Yeah, that's one, okay, that's uh, six, uh, five, six, and seven, they are the private information. The all the rest is, is the uh, three other coordinating coordinates, x1, x2, and x3, they are non-negative. x4 can be a negative value. And once again, I'm just doing the same picture, whatever I did before, so that this x1, x2, x3, they are the non-negative values, x4, which can be negative, and all the possible values, whatever they are just coming up, they are just getting, getting this thing, and x4 is just the three joint information, which can be just negative here. Okay, so that's four variables. Okay, so that four variables, the one thing is that uh, we are, Okay, that's some, some notation which I will just use. So I simply just drop the uh, letter I and H. Very probably you have seen those things. The things are just getting a little bit uh, shorter to write down. And also for the Ingleton expression, whatever you see here, I'm just using, using this, this abbreviation for the Ingleton expression. This is symmetric on the first two and the last two variables. So, and also there are six Ingleton expressions, so depending on who you are choosing the first two variables. Four choose two is six. That's why we have six Ingleton uh, expressions. Okay, uh, that's the region. Whenever all six Ingleton expressions are non-negative, that is denoted by, by that fantastic notion, and also the parts. Whenever one of the Ingleton expression is, uh, is violated, so this non-negative is denoted that stuff. Whatever is known, uh, has been known quite a, a long time ago, that the wall uh, actually, actually the, okay, that without star and without the bar, everything. Uh, so that those things simply just, uh, it has more or less a, a joint interiors. So that the wall four dimensional thing, it is a union of all of those things. Uh, this one is a, a cone, which is a full dimensional polyhedral cone and all the rest, they are, or they have disjoint interiors and they are isomorphic. Okay, so that, that the Ingleton, it's, uh, it plays a very special role. Oh. Raymond, should now, shouldn't I have to just uh, stop and give a break? Uh, it's up to you. No, no, it's up to you. you. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm, I will just go on. You have to just stop me. <laughs>
<laughs> prepared. But okay, so that they are they are simply just the okay that they are disjoint interiors, and any of the of these six things they are isomorphic, and the isomorphism is simply just provided by the appropriate permutations of the random variables, and also so that the very first thing it is bounded by Shannon uh, Shannon faces and the six singleton faces. This is a quite nice polyhedral cone. And OK, so that's, that's what have been known for things. And so therefore, if we know one of those things which are just outside of the cone, then we know everything. OK, this I just make a very small footnote that at least about the four-dimensional cone. But OK, let's hope for the best. OK, so the thing is that this is for four. The question is, what about the five? And for five, we have a lot of computational and understanding trouble. So that you know, for four, we have 16. We have 15 dimensions. For five variables, we have 31 dimensions. And this uh, gamma five, it has a 2100 fourth symmetry. So this is a permutation of all the variables. And it has 117, OK, that's one more than 100,000 vertices. And those vertices, they simply just fall. Lots of lots of equivalence classes. Why in the four dimension or four, four variable case, there were only just 15 different different equivalence classes for the vertices. So that that was uh, the vertices were just very nicely uh, uh, put into categories. But but in, in five or variable case, that's a big question. However, the linearly representable core of the whole thing it is exactly known. So that this is why Randall just come in and, and he did a fantastic work to know that exactly what is the linearly representable uh, five variables that hold the, hold the uh, inner, inner core of the linearly representable five variables they look like. So that's what we know. But uh, apart from those things, things are just are quite, uh, are quite uh, oh. Problematic. Okay, so that this is is contained in the simplex. So that's what the uh, nice thing. So that we have to, uh, 15, 15 uh, Shannon faces, which are uh, bounding uh, this part, and one of them is the Ingleton facet, and and the world portrusion is on the negative side of the Ingleton facet, and there are 15 other, the uh, 14 other Shannon facets, which are just bounding the whole thing. And uh, the base of the simple, or uh, the simplex, okay, that's okay. They are the base, whatever. This is on, on the on, on the, uh, linearly representable side, and so simply just you can just look at that. You are this is a simplex, so you are just picking any of the points, and you are finding a distribution which satisfies all the rest. Okay, so that's what happens. And if you are throwing away everything but the ingleton. OK, you are throwing away number four here. Then you have a distribution where the number four is one, and all the rest is zero. OK, you, uh, if you are just, you have, you have a distribution when this is one, and everything, all the, all the others simply are zero. And so that the only thing what is missing, that there is no such a distribution whenever this would be minus one, this value, and all the rest would be zero. OK, that's, there are no such a distribution. And this is because uh, this, would, uh, this would simply just uh, falsify the Zhang Yang inequality. But for the, all, the, all the 14 points, they are entropic. And all of the 14 points, they are, as they are just satisfying uh, all, this, all, all the ingletons, they are just 0 there, so that they are on, on, on the ingleton part. Okay, in this part, they are so that this is a simplex one. 15 points are here, and only just one point is missing at the top, and otherwise the whole thing is some, somewhere inside. Okay, so that's so. Okay, whenever I want to just make a make a picture of whatever is how the whole thing looks like inside this 50 dimensional stuff, then the very nice way to doing is simply just using these values, whatever you see here, as the coordinates. Okay, so that rather than using the entropies as coordinates, I'm using these values so that I have 15 values here. I have 15 coordinates, so that therefore this is something. So that very probably those things, they will just give us a much more a natural stuff because, because the, we, we know that things are just here. So that's what we are using. So that you are using the facet equations as coordinates 
for, uh, rather than the coordinates of the each entropy vectors. So that is what I'm just calling the natural coordinates. Okay, so that there are six natural coordinates depending on which of those things you are just choosing from. And here is an example. So that this is the uh, ringing bell distribution. Here are all the entropies, whatever you see here. And here are the, uh, the entropies in the natural, or the, here are the same, same things in the natural coordinates. And as you see that we have lots and lots of zeros here and the end, and otherwise we have just only two different values. Okay, still we have three or four different values in the original one, but this is no wonder that the ringing bell distribution looks like so nice. So it is something which is a, which is can be just a very important stuff. So that's what we are just heading for, so that we are using the natural coordinates to try to visualize exactly that whole the four-dimensional entropy part of those things looks like. Okay, so that if you if you think that I would just I have a short break from from that point on and and then. Yeah, okay, that's up to you. Hope, hope, hope.